Today on the IoT Show, we have Raul and Jen talking to us about Arduino maker boards and how to quickly connect them up to the Azure cloud. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to today's IoT show. Today on the show, we have Raul Leclerc and Jen Fox, and they will be walking us through the Arduino uh, CSDK sample libraries. So welcome to the show, you two. Yay, thank, you. thank you, Vanessa. All right, and so um, you guys brought with you several different boards today, correct? Yeah. Um, and can you tell me a little bit more about why you guys started this project? Aha, totes, I got this one. <laughs> okay, so I appreciate that you asked that question because I always like to talk about like why did we spend our time and energy doing the things that we're doing. Um, so this kind of breaks down into two parts. So like, why did we want to make samples for the Arduino IDE when Microsoft has like development environments, right? Like VS Code and Visual Studio, which are rad. Um, and then the second part is why did we want to use these boards in particular? So first of all, why Arduino IDE? Well, it's kind of become the de facto programming environment for folks that are looking to learn coding or looking to learn electronics. And also it's really popular with the maker community. Um, and so like our goal um, for my team, I, I help a team called the Maker Lab and it sits in the office of the CTO. And our goal is to help make Microsoft technology more fun, interesting, and accessible to a broader audience. So we are like, OK, a lot of people are using the Arduino IDE. We should be making samples for the tools that people are using um, to teach them our, our products and our technologies, right? And so by doing the samples in the Arduino IDE, it makes it easier for people to learn hyperscale IoT platforms like Azure IoT because you don't have to learn, if you're not familiar with VS Code, you don't have to sit there and learn the, the UI. You can use one that you're already familiar with. You're really meeting them where they're currently at. Exactly. Awesome, yep, awesome. Yep. And then, so that, that explains why you guys embarked upon this project. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you guys picked these boards specifically? Totally, yeah, I can, I can take this one too. Um, so, um, you know, like sometimes we get asked, like, why are you supporting these boards? for a hyperscale platform when these are not the boards that you would scale with? And that's a fair question. <laughs> um, and the answer is, well, maker boards like Arduino boards or the ESP breakout boards, um, they are used by hobbyists and professionals alike to build prototypes and proof of concepts. And you know, obviously, they're called maker boards because they're really popular with the maker community. And makers are folks that are you know, building new technologies, new products, and new industries. And so if we want to get innovators and inventors learning and, and using and playing with Microsoft technology, then again, we need to meet them where they're at. Yes. And so uh, when the opportunity came up uh, to work with Raul's team, the Azure Embedded C SDK team, we were like, ah, yes, let's use some <laughs> Arduino boards. And we wanted, to, we wanted to use a board that had the RP2040 chip on it because it's just blossoming in popularity the last couple of years for many different reasons. Number one is, it's in stock, <laughs> very important, right? Um, it's actually, I was doing some research on DigiKey and it, I was really surprised to find that it was one of the cheapest chips on the market as well, oh, that's awesome. especially for how powerful it is. And so it makes a lot of sense that it's kind of uh, seeing this uh, awesome rise in popularity over the last couple of years. Um, so that's why we wanted the RP2040 um, Arduino version. And then of course the Arduino version was the first one to have Wi-Fi, so very important when you're doing IoT. And then the Portenta was a cool board because it's got two powerful processors on it, an M4 and an M7. Yeah, Sorry. thank you. Um, and it also has a security chip on board. And so it's really useful if you want to build one-off projects um, that require processing power, like doing AI at the edge, which is a hot topic right now, mm. um, or if you need a, a project that has some security applications. That makes a lot of sense. So Raul, you have a board connected up to your machine right now. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's going on here? Yeah, of course. Uh, so the board I have connected to my machine right now is the Arduino Nano RP2040, which has a Raspberry Pi chip on it, actually. And um, if you see on screen, on the left-hand side, I actually have the Arduino IDE pulled up. 
and um, demo. Sorry. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, demo so, time. Yep. <laughs> demo time. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to demo the functionality of the board. And so you can actually find the sample that we've created on the Arduino IDE if you install the Azure SDK 4C library. And if you look here, all you need to really do is go into the iotconfigs.h file and fill out the details for your Azure IoT hub and your, and your uh, Wi-Fi. Oh, that's and super easy. And then you'll easy. be connected. You can just upload it, and it'll work. So I've already taken the time to do that, and it's already uploaded. So we can actually go ahead and uh, see it in action. So I'm going to go ahead and open the, I'm going to reset my board, and we're going to see what it is doing. One second, there we go. So right now it's attempting to connect to Wi-Fi. Once it does that, it should start sending some telemetry. And we can see it on the right-hand side with Azure IoT Explorer. All right, perfect. So yeah, it's sending right. some telemetry. And we can actually see what we're sending over here. It'll take some time. Are you right. just sending like a hello world message? Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. So it's like a pretty simple one. We're just counting the messages that we're sending. And so. But that was super, super fast. So all you had indeed. to do was download that sample, adjust it to connect up to your IoT hub, and put in your SSID information. And you were able to send telemetry up into the cloud. Yeah, and not just that, actually. So if we go to the Cloud to Device option in IoT Explorer, I can actually send messages from the cloud to the device. Yeah, what's really awesome is, like, to your point, you just you can, once you put in the uh, the the GitHub URL and the Arduino Library Manager, it shows up in the examples built into Arduino. And like Raul said, all you have to do is change a few things, mm -hmm. and then you can get the sample to work. And so it's a much easier onboarding path to learning a platform like Azure IoT. That mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Um, so kind of building on that, can you tell me a little bit more about you know how these samples are architected or you know just what it looks like, I guess? Yeah, of course. Um, I think, uh, do we have the diagram? Can I, I pull that yeah, up? Yeah, you can pull that up. OK, perfect. So yeah, uh, basically, I'm, I was just going to go over kind of how the sample is working, what, what is going on in the board. And so there's just a series of very simple steps. Um, of course, we've simplified it a little bit, so you guys don't have to read the code. <laughs> and so the first step, obviously, is to connect the board to Wi-Fi. And so you can see in step number one, Arduino Nano or Portenta connect to Wi-Fi. After that, we initialize the Azure IoT Hub client. And so basically what that is is just getting the credentials into a client so then we can initiate the connection. And then something important happens, which is one of the highlights of this board, and is that we're going to generate the MQTT SSAS password, which will serve as kind of our authentication to Hub. And that is done partially in help with, of the ATEC 608A, which is the security chip on board. Now, the ATEC is a security chip that can do a variety of cryptographic operations. In the context of our sample, what it is doing is it is actually doing an operation called HMAC. And it's doing that on our SAS token, which you can get from your IoT hub. And once it does the HMAC operation, we can consider the communications going forward as secure. And so what is the benefit of actually using the ATEC is that it is a more secure and more and much faster way of doing uh, security operations. I was going to say, it usually requires multiple AAD logins to kind mm -hmm. of get that flow going. So it's awesome that you guys have already built that into the sample. Of course. And if you wanted to expand and use more of the um, features of the ATEC, you could even go ahead and store your certificates, which is another way of authenticating. You can store certificates and do multiple other operations as well. So. Moving on from that, then once we generate the MQTT SAS password, we can initialize the MQTT client, which kind of lives under the Azure IoT Hub client. And uh, once that is done, we can connect to IoT Hub using the credentials that we got from the ATEC. And so once this connection is established, the final step is just you can send messages to and from the IoT Hub for both samples. And so you can see that highlighted in the green arrows going from the portenta all the way to Hub. Yay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's that's really, really Great. Um, and it really emphasizes the bidirectionality of these samples, which you know it's it's sometimes easier to connect up to the cloud rather than you know <laughs> receive info mm -hmm. down to the cl cloud. Um, and so you mentioned the ATEC, you know, having that security chip on these boards um, you know really gives them a leg up and it's it's 
really important when you're considering a board for security purposes. And it does enable things to make things easier, it seems like, as well. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about you know what you want people to do? Do you want them to go and try these boards out themselves? Like what? What do you want uh, the viewers to do with this? <laughs> yeah, uh, check out the samples. Yeah, please check out the samples. Uh, it's on GitHub, or if you go to the website aka.ms/arduino, that's it. Mm -hmm. It'll take you to the GitHub. Um, like I mentioned, you just copy the GitHub link and put that in your Arduino library. Uh, sorry, board manager under mm -hmm. preferences. And then if you restart Arduino, uh, those samples should pop up under the examples in under the file menu in Arduino. So mm -hmm. open those up, put in your Wi-Fi and uh, Azure IoT credentials, and then you're good to go. Awesome. Um, so um, just to for short link to short link this, it's going to be uh, aka.ms slash Arduino, and that should take you to the appropriate page. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, you two, thank for you. coming on the show. Yay. Yeah. Thank and you so much for having us. Thank and like, let us know if there are other boards that mm -hmm. you want supported. If you have questions, um, like I said, our goal with these samples is to make it easier to learn things that can be a little bit challenging. Uh, <laughs> and you know, Azure IoT is is a hyperscale platform, so it can do a lot of stuff. And we're hoping that these samples make it a lot easier to learn and build hobbyist projects. Uh, business projects, whatever you want to use them for. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks. you.